Hey guys, welcome back to your Python tutorial series. In this video, we're going to be talking a new aspect of programming known as loops. So previously, we talked about uh, control flow structures, which they control the flow of the program. For example, an if statement, it can either be true and go left in the program, or it can be false and go right, figuratively. Basically, it, choose, it, it controls the flow of the program and changes either the entire program or aspects of the program depending upon a certain value or a comparison. Well, with loops, what it will do is it will go through something a certain number of times or until a value is true or basically until we tell it to stop. And we'll give a condition and it will follow that condition and once that condition is completed, the loop will stop. So let's explain what the first loop we will be using is known as a for loop. Now when you're first starting out with for loops, the syntax, which is the way it's structured, the, the way you type it, can be a little bit confusing. But the first thing you do is you say for to start the loop and then you give a variable. You don't have to define this variable up here. You can just make it up right here. So for x and then we can do something such as in range and then we give it a range. So here's how we give a range. We give the first number and then we give this, the number to stop at, stop before. All right, and then we just like an if statement, we put a colon at the end of it. So this might be a little confusing if you're starting out, so I just recommend that you memorize the way this is set up. But basically, it's going to do something for every single number within this range. So for every x in the range of 0 to 10, do something with it. Now, let's say we could we could just say uh, print x. Or, sorry, And then we can press enter and run it. And you can see what it does is it prints every single x, starting at 0 and stopping before 10. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So a total of 10 numbers. Now basically what this did is for every x within the range of 0 to 10, it printed x. So x was 0, and then for the next time, x was 1, and then for the next time, it was 2, and then for the next time, it was 3, and so forth. Uh, that's not the only thing we can do. We don't have to print x. Let me take this back down here, and I'll show you what I mean. We could say print... Hello! Sorry, I forgot to quote it. Hello, my home biscuit. Be sure to subscribe, yo, girl. And then we could print that, and it will print it 10 times. So that's how we can print something an X number of times. And obviously, we don't just have to print, although our skills and programming are very limited right now in this series. So that's why that's pretty much all we ever do within these conditionals. But as we get farther, we will do more things, of course. So. Now, for every x in the range of 0 to 10, all it did was print the same thing every single time. So it didn't actually print the, iter the iteration number of x. What I mean by that is, each time it goes through this, x is in increased 1. So x starts at 0, and then we print 0. Then it goes to 1, and then we print 1 on, in this previous example. Well, for this example, we never printed that number. All we did was print this string right here. That's why I printed it a bajillion times. Specifically 10, but you know, that's pretty much a bajillion. Now one of the most common and most useful reasons for a for loop is to do things with items in a list. So let's make a friends list. And if you don't remember how to make lists, you just make an assignment operator and then you use square brackets. And then for every item in the list, you just uh, separate it by commas. And you don't put a comma at the end because there's nothing else coming after that. So here are my friends. Me, God, and uh, Jimmy from school. All right, cool. So these are all my friends, right? Now, what we can do is we, can, we could uh, print these out. We could say print friends. And it will tell us all of our friends. But with a for loop, we can do more things, such as this. We could say for x 
And we'll actually here, just to make it easier, I'll take this up here and we'll just bring it down here by pressing enter. So for x in range 0 through 10, uh, what we're going to have to do is we're just going to get rid of this range function and we're just going to instead, we're going to put our new list. So now for every single value in friends, which there's three of them, me, God, and Jimmy from school, we're going to print something out. So right now if we did it like this, we should get three values. You see? But we don't want to do that. Let's do something new. We could say print. We could say welcome to my friends list. Or if we wanted to change for every person, we could say print x. Now it lists me, God, Jimmy from school as separate values rather than as a list. Another thing we could do on top of this is if you remember a while ago we talked about using variables within printing and we can also do that when we are using a for loop. So let's try that now. Let's copy this from up here and then within our print statement we could say hello and then um, you are my friend uh, your name is and then we use a little uh, percent and then we use an s right and then what we do is we go percent and then we tell uh, what variable to put in here and because we're iterating through X, we're going to use X. All right, so let's try it. Hello, you are my friend. Your name is me. Hello, you are my friend. Your name is God. Hello, you are my friend. Your name is Jimmy from school. So that's a really awesome way how we can iterate through an entire list and do things with our values. Let's try another thing with, oops, sorry. Let's try another thing with numbers. So let's make a new list. We'll just make it nums. And let's make it 5, 3, and 10. Okay? And then let's make a for loop. We'll just copy this one. And we're going to say for x in nums, so for every value within nums, we are going to print x plus 5. So now it's going to add 5 to every single value within nums. And you can see 10, 8, and 15. So you can see we're not only limited to strings. So if you had like a list of numbers that you needed to change all together, such as multiplying them by 10% or something like that, well that is how you could do that. Uh, that's a good introduction for for loops, and in the next video we'll be getting into more some more stuff. But for now, I think that's all. This video is getting pretty long, so be sure to subscribe, and I will see you all in the next video. Thank you for watching, and subscribe.